Lake Lowell Reservoir, why it was made, and how it changed the area around it. A documentary created by Greg Warren. You are looking at a man-made reservoir located in Napa, Idaho known as Lake Lowell Reservoir. Today, the area around the reservoir is much different from how it was when Idaho became a territory back in 1853. Back then, if we looked around us, much of the land would have been considered desert and not considered farmland. Today, we will be looking at how the creation of Lake Lowell Reservoir came into being and what impact the reservoir has had on the surrounding area. Before Idaho became a state, it was part of what was known as the Washington Territory in 1853. This territory was much larger than what the state of Idaho is today and included along with it Montana and most of Wyoming. It was not the promise of farmland which attracted many of Idaho's first settlers, but the lure of gold which was discovered in the 1860s at Orfino Creek. News of gold as well as the Oregon Trail brought many pioneers and settlers into Idaho. Much of the land the settlers passed through was too arid and did not receive enough of rainfall to grow crops. Those first early settlers which came to Idaho and wanted to farm were often known as sagebrush farmers. This was because before crops could be planted, the sagebrush would first need to be removed. It took a lot of time and energy to clear the sagebrush, but for many of these settlers, the biggest obstacle still to overcome was the lack of irrigation water. Most of the farms were located near rivers or a lake where water could be used to irrigate the dry arid land. Much of the land in Idaho and the surrounding states would need to have some form of irrigation for farms to be established. In 1894, in an attempt to pro help provide irrigation water to the vast millions of acres of land, President Grover Cleveland signed the Desert Land Act of 1894, which became later known as the Cary Act. The Cary Act allowed for the transfer of millions of acres of arid federal land to be transferred to individual states, provided the state could come up with a plan to provide for irrigation. The individual states now had the incentive to develop more farmland. For the states to succeed, individuals would need to come up with a plan to create reservoirs and an irrigation plan. One such man Ira Murin Perrine saw the potential for turning the desert land around the Shoshone Falls into fertile farmland. Perrine's plan was to create one of Idaho's first reservoirs by creating a dam on the Snake River and canals to provide irrigation water to the land below it. Perrine was a rancher that had moved from Indiana to Idaho. When President Grover signed the Cary Act, Perrine realized with the creation of a dam and canals that thousands of sagebrush acres could be transformed into farmland. He financed the project himself, even acting as his own engineer in the choosing of the site and the construction. Building the dam was hard work and it was created using horse-drawn machinery and the use of the railroad to bring it in, the materials. The men which built it lived in tents right at the work site. It cost about $30,000 back then to create the dam, later to be known as Milner Dam. It lasted until 1988, when it had to be rebuilt at a cost of over $11 million. Milner Dam helped serve as a model for the reservoirs that were to follow. The Cary Act had opened up the door to allow federal land to be sold and developed but it did not provide any money or offer any help in the planning or the construction of irrigation projects. To help further promote the development of the arid western lands, another president named Theodore Roosevelt signed the Reclamation Act of 1902. The Reclamation Act provided money as well as oversight for the construction of reservoirs to provide irrigation water. It was this Reclamation Act which inspired another man from Idaho named James H. Lowell. James H. Lowell was crucial in the campaign to create a reservoir in Nampa. He gave speeches throughout the Nampa Valley to persuade the other settlers to get the government involved in creating the reservoir. Lowell's first early efforts did not succeed. The government had approved other sites and it looked like funding for the Nampa Reservoir would not be possible due to insufficient funds. Historian Ann Laurie Bird described how Lowell did not give up. Lowell studied every project and its needs, wrangled all the information he could get. 
explored every source of revenue and every change in substitution that might be made, and he kept at it for six weeks, Bird wrote. It was his determination and persistence which finally paid off. He convinced the local settlers and gained approval for the project in 1905. Lowell found the funding through his persistence and was approved for enough funding to build a diversion dam, enlarge the New York Canal, and build two dams to create the reservoir at Deer Flat in Nampa, Idaho. There were other obstacles to overcome before the construction could begin. The property owners who had agreed with the plan held out for bigger payments for their land that stood where the lake would be created. When it was all said and done, and the legal battles were settled, 9,260 acres were secured for 222,000. Now, with the land purchased, construction for the reservoir could begin. Ann Bird described the men hired to do the work as mainly of the hobo class. The Idaho Statesman article described the scene as gangs of men sweating in the summer sun. The construction of the dams was underway. Dirt and gravel from quarries were loaded by steam shovels onto train cars where it was unloaded and dumped near the dams. It was estimated that the amount of material would equal 4 million cubic yards. That's enough material to equal a football field covered with material the height of a quarter of a mile high. Horse-drawn teams, along with men, move the material to build the two earthen dams which hold the water at the reservoir. Some teams had as many as 18 horses. Just like at the Milner Dam, the men lived in tents near the construction site. Approval to begin building the reservoir was on March 27, 1905, and was completed in 1908. It was not until 1948, after Lowell had died, that the reservoir was officially named after the man who had worked so hard to create it. The water which was to fill Lake Lowell Reservoir came through a canal named the New York Canal. The canal was named after New York investors who financed the construction of the canal. The original plans for the New York Canal had not been to provide water for the reservoir, but to provide irrigation water for farmland in and around Boise. When financial setbacks and land disputes arose, it enabled the new Bureau of Reclamation to purchase the New York Canal and use it to help fill the new reservoir. To provide water to the farmlands below, the reservoir needed more canals, but the main canal leaving the reservoir still went by the name of the New York Canal. Other canals were dug to connect with it, creating a network of canals to irrigate the surrounding farmland. All of the canals were created mainly with horse-drawn equipment and lots of manual labor. It's amazing how the dams at the reservoir, the canals, and even the smaller ditches were created using horse-drawn equipment. With the dams in place, water flowed through the New York Canal and filled the reservoir. The impact of having irrigation water greatly changed the area. Land prices increased, more settlers moved into the area. The kinds of crops which could be grown now showed an increase in diversity. Crops now included sugar beets, hay, orchards, and a wide variety of row crops. A land which was once considered wasteland and had once been limited to sagebrush now was producing an abundance and variety of crops. With irrigation water came the ability for farms and ranches. The nearby towns grew in population. New businesses were created as a result and all the growth which came about was directly linked to having the Lake Lowell Reservoir. Without the reservoir, the growth would not have taken place. After the creation of the reservoir, Teddy Roosevelt also decided to make it a wildlife refuge and named it the Deer Flat National Wildlife Refuge in 1909. The reservoir provides an important breeding area for birds and other wildlife. The Deer Flat Refuge offers nature trails, an educational learning center, as well as bird watching blind. The learning center provides an important role in educating people about wildlife and conservation. There is no cost to visit the educational center and schools and other groups can schedule times for presentation and activities. Outside of the wildlife refuge area, the reservoir also provides other recreational opportunities for people. Activities such as fishing, nature hikes, boating, swimming, bird and wild animal watching.
There are also picnic areas and restrooms provided for the public at no cost. The Lake Lowell Reservoir was created initially to provide the needed irrigation water to farms and ranches. It was created through the efforts of two American presidents and was one of the first reservoirs created in the West. It received its inspiration through the efforts of two Idaho men, Ira Buren Perrine, responsible for the creation of the Idaho Miller Dam, and James H. Lowell, who was the driving force behind Lake Lowell Reservoir being built. Lake Lowell Reservoir has had an immense impact on its surrounding area. It is responsible for the farmland being created and for the population growth and businesses that followed. It was created during a time before modern machinery, built mostly through the efforts of horse-drawn equipment and manpower. Lake Lowell Reservoir, like Milner Dam Reservoir, serves as an example for other reservoirs built in other parts of the United States. It symbolizes what can be accomplished with determination and a vision. It reminds us of who we are and the important role irrigation played in developing.